Hello internet, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are out, the three of us again, same spot, King Lake West. And what I have today is the R1300 BMW GS. And uh, you would have watched my recent video <coughs> just a few days ago uh, on the first impressions review on the 1300 so before I start off I just want to give a big shout out to Doncaster BMW for loaning me the bike for two days to test and also I want to give a big shout out to Ross who is the dealer principal for Doncaster BMW and John who is one of the salesperson at Doncaster BMW without that their support this would not have been possible so you would have uh, watched the first impressions review and that was basically um, picking up the bike and what my first thoughts were. Now that I've had a bit more time with the bike riding me back home and, and also riding from home this morning here, I think we are in a position to sort of work on uh, a review uh, on, on the bike. So I'm going to start off with uh, just a bit of uh, the, the outlooks of the bike and some of the techs that it have. And then we'll get on the bike and then we'll ride it. So we're headed to Broadford today. Just some easy roads and we'll ride and, and we'll, I'll share with you uh, my prospects on what I find on the R1300GS. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the size. So this is my, my 1250GS Adventure. And obviously this is bigger than the standard GS that we'll find. So it's probably not a good comparison point, but if you would like to see the 1300 and that next to me here is a Benelli TRK502 and surprisingly the 1300 actually looks smaller than the TRK502 so that's one thing uh, to note uh, and in terms of the comparison with the size of the 1250 GS it is also slightly smaller it's more streamlined, more aerodynamic, uh, in my opinion, with the front fenders, so the wind just blows through. And it's also slender towards the back of the bike. So it's really, I think it's designed to really have really good wind flow uh, throughout the bike. So that's the first uh, point that I would like to share with you. Now this model here is the uh, triple black version. And the triple back version um, comes with uh, three important uh, distinctive uh, tags that it has on it. Number one, it's got the um, automated windshield. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, it's got the um, center stand assist, whereby when you uh, uh, put the center stand down, I'll, I'll do a demo later, but essentially when you put the center stand down, the uh, the motor in the in the center stand actually helps lift the bike up, so that's the uh, uh, the second uh, uh, tag that it's got the distinctive tag, and the third one is it's got the uh, right height adapt adaptive right height adjustment, which means that when the bike um, when you when you come to a stop, the bike actually would um, would go down. Would lower itself and means that you could flat foot on your on the bike so that was the three uh, distinctive tags that it has on the triple black and now i think what i'm going to show you is a bit on the dash and how uh, you navigate through the dashboard so let's do that all right the first things that you realize here now this uh, bike what's different also with the 1300 gs is if you look at the um, handlebar mount here it seems like this uh, handlebar bracket is actually mounted on a rubber bushing now I can't remember what's the exact name for this but essentially that's meant to help with the dampening of the uh, steering bar and it's also meant to give you a bit more feedback from the road as well so that's uh, a smart design and I must say that uh, when I compared this with my 1250 um, you tend to get a bit more feedback from the road okay so now let's go to the to the switch gears so on here we've got the 
all of this is fairly uh, standard so if you got the cruise control what's different from the 1200 is these two buttons here so that's a favorites button and that's once you set your favorites you control it from this uh, button here I'll show you a demo shortly and on this side here you've got the start stop switch now the Australian model doesn't come with a sauce button SOS button but you've got a start stop switch here you've got the mode selector here for your riding modes and this is your your power button for turning on the engine okay so let's give let's turn on the power so you press that you get the blinking on this one here and you get the start of screen on the TFT now arguably BMW makes one of the best uh, TFT displays so this is the how the TFT looks now what's different again from the 1200 is you got that extra bit at the bottom here which you don't have on the 1250 sorry and let's let me show you what uh, this uh, button does so if you press this favorites button it actually brings out the menu with all the uh, favorites that you possibly have so you can use your wonder wheel here to scroll down and ACC here is the adaptive cruise control heating here is for your uh, seat heating and uh, handlebar heating this is your automatic windscreen adjustment uh, DTC you've got your DTC is a traction control you've got your uh, damping which you can adjust adjust you've got your ride height which you can adjust so essentially now if you can see how this dot is pointed there what that actually means here is that I have got my favorites set to that so when I'm on the fly and I'm riding this bike so supposedly I'm riding now and this is how it looks like so if I put turn up this button here what it would do it is it will turn up I can actually control my my heating level so you can see how that's the bottom one is the seat heating and the top one is the handlebar heating so it's actually pretty cool uh, the uh, this uh, function here now if I wanted to change that to uh, the windscreen for example, all I do is I move it down to the windscreen, click OK there. So now when I press this button here, the windscreen goes up and it comes down. How cool is that? Now let's dive into some of the other menus. Uh, really not much difference. Uh, standard. Uh, if you have ridden a BMW GS before, you'd be quite familiar with it. So again, on the top here, you can same stuff. You know your fuel tank uh, levels. You've got uh, the odometer and and tire pressure and mileage and all that sort, of, that sort of stuff, which is quite common. And then if you go down, you go into the main menu. You got your vehicle settings, which is essentially the same stuff that you'll find in most of the uh, newer BMW motorcycles same interface and so on gives you all the information you need uh, you can reset so I'm not gonna do that now and then here is where you go into the spot screen so when you actually go down it gives you the spot screen display now the spot screen display it's got your traction control display here it's got your brakes uh, here it tells you how many milliseconds and so on it's got your lean angle here so it'll tell you what's your lean angle when you're riding the speed comes up here and this will be your uh, ref meter so pretty cool uh, um, display uh, this is new and you will not find this in your 1200s or 1250s so let's turn off that display uh, now you're back to your standard display now going back into the settings uh, you've got your navigation it comes with a navigation preparation so you can either get your connected right cradle similar to what you have for the other BMW motorcycles connect that put your phone on and it's good to go or you can buy one of the BMW navigation systems and put it on um, then you've also got your media it's all grayed out at the moment because I'm not connected to Bluetooth you got a phone which means that you can connect your phone to the to the uh, motorcycle and you can access all the functionalities and then you got the settings here which is the main setting so here under the assistance you can look at uh, your suspension settings uh, damping configurations 
and this is something different from the 1250 in which that you can actually control in the 1250 you can actually do that but only for the pro settings here you can do it it seems like you can do it for the road dynamic and enduro which is something new and you know as, as you're probably aware the 1300 uh, comes with uh, uh, an upgraded uh, suspension system as opposed to the 1250 uh, anyway so that's probably why it can do all of this other stuff now with the cruise control setting here you can um, so with the uh, adaptive cruise control characteristics, there are a few options here. I'm not entirely sure what they mean, but there's dynamic and comfortable. I think dynamic means it's more responsive. Comfortable means it, it probably isn't as fast uh, responsive. For example, if the, once the car, once you create a distance from a vehicle in front of you, the bike will not accelerate uh, as quick as it would when you are in the dynamic mode to keep up with the speed sort of a thing. So that's your cruise control, front collision warning here, you can turn it on and you can set the, the, um, the setting to, um, you know, whether you want it to, to come up to you early, late or you want to turn it off. It's also got the uh, warning plus and brake assistance. L LCW, I'm not sure what that is, uh, so I'm not going to talk about it much. HSC is your hill stop uh, control, which uh, I've got it on manual, meaning that you'll have to press your brake, uh, press your brakes when you stop, uh, and the hill stop assist will, will will trigger. I think if you go under automatic, it sort of uh, it sort of will will um, will know when you're on incline and it'll, it'll turn it on, sort of a thing. So that's the basic uh, assistance setting. So now you go into the vehicle settings uh, and here this is basically a personalization. You can you know, set the bike to automatically lock when, it, lock when you turn the ignition off. You can set your lights. Uh, there's an option here for shift lights. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, and there's other configurations here. Um, this is your start RPM. So how high do you, uh, the red lining uh, for this and RPM brightness uh, and so on and then riding mode pre-selection again it's got all the pro modes as well and then you can select up to four modes that you can uh, put on this button here so that you can shift it on the go this is all very similar to the 1250 uh, of course uh, with the lights uh, that's something new that the 1250 doesn't have and this uh, lock ignition is also something that the 1250 does not have and then you got system settings that's pretty standard connections again that's pretty standard uh, display you can set your brightness and so on pretty standard um, and then you got your information is basically um, about your software versions and so on so that sums up uh, the instrument cluster and the control so hopefully that's uh, helpful. So let's look at some of the other uh, noticeable things that I've found on the bike so far. So first thing here is the cylinder heads. Now, I do like this finish that they've got on the cylinder heads. Uh, it's almost like a, uh, it's got a powder coat finish, but it's got like bits of silver on there. So that's actually a very nice finish. Um, as compared to the 1250s um, they've got the same finish here on the uh, shaft drive as well which is quite neat actually um, and you also get it on the whole frame as well which is really really neat although I'm not sure if you actually scuff it or something how how you actually paint it back or cover it up so that's going to be a bit of a thing to find out it's got the um, um, sheet metal uh, frames that we've all been told about <laughs> and then uh, Brembo uh, brakes now the brakes on this thing is excellent it's really good brakes uh, it's got the paralever and telelever uh, monoshocks uh, it's they have moved the 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 steering wheel damper higher with the 12 50 it's actually lower um, and then we've got the fog lights mounted here now the controversial front look uh, I'll be honest with you 
I am uh, growing on the front look. Um, I think once you get used to it, it actually isn't all that bad, to be honest. So that's definitely uh, something interesting. Um, it's got the um, your steering wheels, sorry, your signal light mounted on the hand guards here and it's a bit uh, this plastic it's all plastic but it seems to be a bit more solid than what we have on the on the gs 1250 so that's nice um the mirrors here has you can see this little triangle bit that's your um blind spot assist so that lights up when it detects a vehicle in your blind spot um besides that with a triple black, it comes with a normal uh, foot bag, which takes some getting used to. Now, if you go to the exhaust can, it's significantly smaller than the uh, 1250. It's significantly smaller, but I think the way they've done that is they've got this big catalytic converter under the bike. Oh, look how huge that is. Um, it's all chrome plated, which is nice, but that's huge. And it's sort of sitting under the bike, so you don't find that in the 1250 uh, for sure. So, quite interesting. So that there is the uh, noticeable stuff that I've just pointed out to you. Uh, overall, the finish is really, really premium. It's definitely got the premium finish, no doubt about it. Uh, the triple back color scheme is quite nice. One thing though that I'm not entirely sure about is with this uh, uh, seat, the color. So what they have here, this one here, is probably good to protect the bike. It's a bit of a rubbery sort of compound that protects the, the tank um, here. But I don't think the color actually suits with the black. That's my opinion. And it runs through like this. So look, uh, drop your thoughts in the comments below I'm not sure if this is something you like but definitely not something that I uh, find attractive um, now a few other things it's also got the rider sorry the pillion uh, heated seats which you can control manually here you can control the rider seats and the uh, handlebar grips uh, automatically from the switch gear here and it also got the storage compartment that fits a phone but you can fit a phone you can't fit the fit key in so it's either you put your phone or the key in so it's either or but it's neat i suppose it's slightly bigger than what we've got on the gs adventure and from memory i don't think the 1250 gs has got a storage compartment now it's also got this uh, keyless uh, uh, fuel tank um, um, as well like the 1250 has as well and i think that basically sums up my oh hang on one last thing so this here it's also got the various connections for the various system so this is for the top box and it's got a nice cap here these caps have been reported to get stolen so you've got it's got the various caps here you put it on you screw it on it's also got one here well that's hard to open isn't it all right here we go There you go for the various system and then uh, these uh, foot packs you can actually remove the rubber bits for better um, I suppose when I mean, you're going off-road you want better grips but really that's really all uh, one last thing um, this is the um, adaptive cruise control uh, sensors for the back and I think because it's got that, they sort of removed the uh, brake light. Surprisingly, last night when I was riding it, I actually find this quite functional. Uh, I think that's going to have some mixed reviews. And the sensor for the front is actually here. This is the sensor, the adaptive cruise control sensor for the front. And it's a bit of a, I don't know... Uh, I wish they had covered it up a little bit more but uh, as I said the looks are growing on me and uh, I think it just will take time before it becomes a norm. Alright so that basically sums up the walk around the bike and uh, 
I think it's time for us to uh, get on the road and I'll tell you, share with you how the handling is. Cheers. Like that, I'm on the bike. Feels a... Uh, I feel a bit more acquainted with the bike today and uh, so hope the, the whole um, walk around that I went, uh, went through with you was uh, informative enough. I wasn't going to go too much into the all spec sheet details, I'm sure you can look it up, there are many people out there that have already done that sort of a thing uh, so far. But generally today uh, we're just going to talk about how the bike handles on the road. All right, just turn down the heated grips. Uh, I must say that uh, it's a bit more fiddly to turn on the heated grips uh, when compared with uh, the 1250 because the 1250 has got a button there. So it's like a quick button. You just press and it's dedicated for heated grips. Here, there's a bit marking around. Depends on which one you set as a favorite. So at the moment, I've got the windscreen set of my favorite. So I can only use this toggle up and down button for the windscreen really. And I have to go into the setting and mess around with the settings in order to get the heated seats and the heated grips turned down. So that's a bit of a, of a hassle in my opinion. Now, one thing I do like about this bike is the uh, the tires, the Metzela. So it, they no longer, they don't seem to use the uh, the the Michelin NK Adventures on this one. Instead, they've gone with the Metzela uh, tires. It's a road tire, and it sticks to the road like glue. So it's a really nice tire, and I really do like the the tire. The bike bends into the corners uh, really quite easily and uh, because it's low, it's much more lower than the, than the GS Adventure but it's also probably slight, with the suspension and all the settings is it's probably a slightly lower than the, the feel, well at least it feels uh, lower than the standard GS so which makes, makes it more like a Sporty adventure tour kind of a feel, so it is quite nice. The engine braking is uh, good, similar to what you find in the 1250. The moment you cross your throttle, there's good engine braking there. It's nice. I'm quite impressed with the uh, wind protection so that this uh, windscreen even though it's smaller than what I have on my bike it is actually very functional it would be nice if it, was, if it was a bit more taller as I mentioned before but uh, I think uh, with the current setting it would actually suit uh, most riders out there I mean if you are going to be a really tall person of uh, 6 foot 1, 6 foot 2 and above you probably get a bit of buffeting um, but otherwise uh, I think for the majority of us it will be quite all right all right so the the 1300 also has got the uh, shift cam technology that you would find in the 1250s however the one thing I do realize though is that with the 1250 uh, when the shift cam activates you actually feel a sudden rush of power and you feel like it's almost like the valves are opening you can actually feel it with this bike uh, it's very subtle uh, it, it's really it's really hard to tell uh, when it's kicked in so that's something I do miss uh, on the 1250 I, I like it I like that feature on the 1250 which I don't think you're gonna get on, on, on this this machine the engine however 
is uh, noisier. Uh, that's what I'm finding. It's a bit more noisier. I mean, the GS engines have always grown to be a bit more agricultural sounding, a bit noisier. That's what makes gives it the character of the bike. Uh, but this one, you can actually hear hear the sound quite noticeably, and uh, that's uh, definitely something uh, that you would need to get used to. If you haven't, if you never ridden a GS before, then it's fine. But if you have and if you've owned one before, then you will notice that sound difference. So the quick shifter, the down blipper is also alright. So let's see, down shifting is good. The down shifting is uh, very similar to the 1250. The quick shifter has improved slightly. So it's still a bit agricultural. You still get a clunk to it, but. Uh, probably not as clunky as the 1250s they have definitely made a bit of an improvement so it's it's a smoother uh, gear engagement uh, but uh, not battery smooth for the right words uh, it's not battery smooth it's still not comparable with uh, most of the other uh, bikes especially the Japanese bikes out there they are battery smooth quick shifters the Ducati Desert X for one has got a really smooth uh, quick shifter so this one here I'm gonna do now so yeah you can see that it, uh, it works it's better but uh, it's still clunky you can still get the clunk you can still feel the clunkiness on it so definitely an improvement from the 1250 but uh, not really a great improvement not something that would warrant you to change your bike if that makes sense oh, I love the downshifting very similar to the 1250 very nice uh, probably a bit smoother than the 1250 The exhaust note it sounds all right actually it's not it's not bad it, it's it's still got that signature boxer engine GS sound but probably lost a bit of the bassiness I would think uh, I think the exhaust of the 1250s definitely sound better this one uh, doesn't doesn't quite sound the same but it's not bad sounding if that makes sense uh, I'm not sure how it would sound with the Yakra pipe on but uh, if I were to own this bike with this exhaust I'll be able to live with that I'm happy with that yeah it's not bad um, although I am a bit biased because I am used to the sound of the 1250 and I do like that sound you get the pop from every now and then on the 1250 it's a bit more raw this is very refined you don't get any popping sounds it's very very refined uh, mind you the as I, as I showed earlier the the size of the exhaust is significantly uh, smaller when compared to the 1250 but then again if you look under the bike where I've shown you earlier there's this big catalytic converter it's huge uh, and something that you would not find uh, in the 1250 models uh, the heated grips are nice really nice heated grips uh, nice and cozy it is a bit cold chilly this morning it's about 18 degrees at the moment and uh, I've never experienced heated seats before because my 1250 doesn't have heated seats BMW decided to not uh, provide heated seats for the 2023 models unfortunately so I lost out there 
but uh, it is nice to have the heated seats I must say it keeps the bum nice and warm all right so we're in a nice nice area in Victoria at the moment and uh, really enjoying the ride on the 1300 so now let's talk about the braking now one thing really noticeable about this bike uh, is the braking uh, they have really done a lot of work on the braking the brakes on this bike is exceptional it's got really good braking power and uh, I do like that that's a noticeable difference uh, a noticeable upgrade for sure uh, when compared with the 1250s now regarding um, the adaptive cruise control unfortunately I won't be by the looks of the kind of roads we are doing today which is mainly uh, back roads you know B and C roads um, there's probably no need to engage the uh, adaptive cruise control but I did briefly try it out yesterday and it worked, would have been in my previous video it works pretty well actually um, it's one of those things that uh, it's a nice to have um, one of those things that once you have you want to always have it but if you never had it it probably doesn't make much of a difference you know so I've got on the 1250 it's got a standard cruise control which I hardly use anyway so the adaptive cruise control for me isn't a big selling point isn't a game changer but for some of you guys that might be a really important thing so yes they've done really well with the adaptive cruise control it handled pretty well and it worked pretty well so I was pretty impressed with it I was pretty happy with it no doubt there uh, whatsoever it's a good nice uh, addition you do get a bit more um, feedback from the from the front wheel of this bike um, a bit more different when you compare it with the top of this so it's nice to have that that uh, the feedback it feels a bit more you know conventional like riding a, any other Japanese bike or something so that's a pretty good uh, change really a bit too warm now so I've just turned off the seat heating the views are exceptional the bike goes really well along the bends it really corners in really well and you know the braking power so if you try to stop it's really good That's what I like about it now the seating position on this bike um, it's a bit more it is upright in a sense uh, but the legs you're not as comfortable with the with the legs unfortunately and because as you can see it's your leg is sort of folded a little bit and for me it's not the it's just not as comfortable as I would like it to be uh, with uh, my GS adventure I'm a bit more upright the legs are sort of the knees are not as bent and uh, it's the same with the the GS 1250 as well so this one uh, because of that I'm not sure um, how I will go with uh, if I got to ride this thing this bike for long distance you know when I say long distance like 
three four hundred kilometers and so on because I think uh, it is uh, probably not as uh, comfortable as the 1250 is now having said that this is a very personal opinion and it's just my thoughts it may not be the same for everyone and some of you guys may find the sitting position excellent so for example Jit had a seat on the bike earlier and he reckons the sitting position is great and he likes it so I guess each to their own and uh, it is uh, very subjective uh, uh, these things the seat however is very very comfortable the seat itself is comfortable I, um, and it's not hurting my, my butt in any way so that's nice really comfortable seat I've been uh, having a lot of fun with this beauty and uh, I must say I, I'm starting to really uh, enjoy enjoy the bike um, it is it's definitely got more of a sporty DNA in it um, it's more like a sports adventure tour rather than a full-on adventure but I know it's fully capable this is again the triple back version which uh, probably doesn't have all the off-road uh, additions on it like the low screens, the foot pack, the handle handlebar rises and so on but uh, nevertheless uh, it is very punchy, the engine is very punchy, very responsive and it just on roads like that you know on, uh, on the bends and stuff it just handles beautifully um, Definitely, I think if if, uh, if, uh, if anyone is in the market for a new bike, this is not a bad choice at all. Not a bad choice at all. It is quite a complete package. It's got everything in there. It, it, it's really, really enjoyable for road riding. I can't comment on off-road riding for two reasons. One. I'm a novice myself and secondly I have not tested this bike off roads uh, because it doesn't have the right it doesn't have the crash bar so I don't want to wreck the bike it doesn't have the right tires and so on so hence uh, only doing road uh, today but it has impressed me look to be honest uh, I had I had I had different thoughts uh, at the start because um, of the looks and uh, I was a bit skeptical about how the bike would handle and so on because the GS 1250 already is such a complete uh, package and I now that I've ri ridden this bike I can see the appeal for it there's definitely an appeal for it it's definitely uh, an excellent machine it's definitely worth the buy, worth the money um, if you're out in the market for a new bike and if you want to upgrade from a different brand or even if you want to upgrade from a 1200 I strongly think that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be worth your while now the question arises if, uh, if I own a 1250 would I upgrade to this? now I already own a 1250 and uh, uh, keeping in mind that mine is an uh, adventure version now the reason I got the GS Adventure 1250 it's because of its touring capabilities and it's also the comfort that you get on it you feel i feel much more protected on the bike it's really it's really more comfortable on long hauls and so on which is eventually what i want to do so this bike is not quite that so for me personally i i prefer the adventure model uh, for those reasons but if you have a gs 1250 the regular gs 1250 to and to upgrade to this model I don't think there is a strong enough argument to do so right uh, whilst the, the tech in here is nice and the handling is great and so on it's not really far behind it's not really sorry not really far ahead it's definitely a hit the 1250 but it's not really far ahead that it that, the, that it warrants you to upgrade um, they have definitely refined the bike 
the finishing is better the, the, the quick shifter is you know everything is slightly better the the suspension is slightly the suspension is slightly better the quick shifter is slightly better um, the handling is, is, is slightly better um, the tech is some some slight improvements um, everything they've done they've added a little bit of everything in there the brakes are, are slightly better so definitely they have they have done a lot the power is better the torque is better uh, it is ticking all the boxes definitely a notch above the 1250 but for day-to-day -day australian riding in the australian roads and uh, you know touring and so on i reckon the 1250 will still will still have its foot in the game for for the foreseeable future at least uh, maybe when they make uh, more um, revisions of this uh, 1300 model maybe then there will be a lot more appeal um, coming and also i think sometimes it's all about uh, how much of these bikes are on the road and then it generates uh, user appeal isn't it so that's probably another another factor as well look the the main um, uh, negative remark uh, or, or the main concerns that people have about the bike uh, is generally that the, the front headlight look which uh, not many people are a big fan of as I've told you before I am definitely growing uh, on that looks uh, I still prefer the looks of the 1250 don't get me wrong but I think uh, people will get used to, the, to, to this look it's going to be the new norm and eventually it'll just be something that people get used to so no issues there uh, whatsoever in terms of, of the looks of the bike All right, so we are wrapping up our ride for today and we have had really good fun today on the 1300 Gram was uh, kind enough to look after the Rhino for me and he's been riding the Rhino. He's getting quite acquainted to the Rhino now. Although he's got his Ducati cap, I think there's a bit of love uh, falling in there for the BMWs. Anyway, we had a good ride and I've discussed it with Graham well, what our thoughts are about the bike. So a few things that we have mentioned before, the engine is a bit noisy. Uh, very different from what we find on the 1250. I did also find that back, you, get, you get a bit of uh, vibrations on the foot pegs and you also get vibrations on the handlebar as well. Especially when you're going about the 3000 revs. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just this bike or it's just how it is. I, I'm not, I don't get that on my 1250, that's for sure. The seating position, Graham, what did you reckon about the seating position? Um. Well, the way the seat, the padding goes up to the um, the, the, the filler, the cap, the filler cap. Uh, it's almost like they're wanting you to get your weight as far forward as possible, and the way the bars are positioned, also. Uh, you know, the more I ride this, the more I just think it's it's a sports tourer. Yeah, it's a it, sports tourer, it, isn't it? It's sporty. It's yeah. really sporty. The way the engine is is tuned and instant acceleration pickup. Yeah. Um, and just the size of it and it's 
nimble, small, nimble, puts a smile on your face, gives you the rush, doesn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It's uh, really, it's worlds apart from the uh, 1250 in, in, in that it's so much smaller. And the thing we tested yesterday was when I was on bin. Uh, yeah, yeah, being yeah. A pillion. Yeah, so I rode the bike, and uh, and Graham was a, a pillion for me. So we did that pillion, pillion passenger thingy, which I've got a video. I put a shot clip at the end in the bloopers. Uh, but Graham did find it a bit hard, isn't it? To sit at the well, back it's, of the pillion. It's so small. It is small. Um, and you, you know, and when you compare it to the twelve fifty, which is, you know, for someone who would be going off on tour, loaded up, panniers, top box, pillion, uh, be really cramped. Yeah, so I felt cramped. I felt perched up here. It wasn't enough. wasn't big enough to see it for yeah. the pillion. For and mind you, Graham isn't isn't big either, so he's uh, of the right size. But uh, again, he was having a. I wouldn't. Club. I wouldn't want to sit on that all day. No, I wouldn't want to sit on that. So what I realized as well, if I if I were to ride this bike for four or five hundred kilometers, I'd probably get tired because of the position of my knee. Oh. Well, on the GS twelve fifty adventure, I could do it the whole day. It's it's much more that, uh, comfortable. When you sit on it, that's the other thing I've noticed, like, you know, that angle there. Yeah. You know, all day long, you're cutting off your blood blood supply to your lower leg. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, whereas it's so much more open and, you know, you've got more space on yeah. the 1250, I think. It's, yeah, yeah, definitely. This really feels so, I mean, I, li I like it. It's, it's so dynamic and... Um, exciting it's yes. a lot more exciting than the 1250 yeah. to ride it's, it's, it's got a lot of rush it's got a lot of yeah. grunt to it yeah. uh yeah. the power is noticeable there's no doubt that the power is noticeable now the big question that arises here is uh what what if i own a 1250 would would it would it be justifiable to buy this and grab you've, you've ridden the 1250 now for some time you've done you've done both the gs you've done the gs adventure you even took this for a for a spin what is your opinion? If you own the GS1250, do you think it would justify to buy one of this? In your opinion? I wouldn't. I, I don't think it's an upgrade, in all honesty. Yeah. I, I think they're two different animals. Yeah, yeah. Um, really, I, you know, um, I'm guessing they're, they're not, they're not, um, this, this supersedes the 1250, but I, I believe they're still keeping yeah. the, the, adventure. the adventure. So the GS1250 adventure will still be in the market, but this is going to supersede the 12, the regular 1250 GSs. Uh, but I also do feel the same, that this is a separate beast altogether. It's, it's, it's very different. It's got, it's got the GS DNA in it, there's no doubt about it, but it's a totally different handling bike, total different feel to it. So if you've got a GS1250, uh, unless you are really eager for a change, I don't think this justifies a change. But having said that, if you are new and you want to get into a BM, you want to get uh, into and, and own a GS or you want to own a BMW, or if you're riding an older GS or something, then definitely this 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 is worth the upgrade. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I, it's I would say though that, that you know, for those of us that are vertically challenged and maybe sort of the fem female riders, yes. Look, I mean that's that's fantastic and flat footed. Yes, yes. And um, what it it rises up. That's right. With the adaptive ride height, it rises up as well. So that's that's another that's another um, added function. So if you are vertically challenged, women riders, uh, vertically challenged uh, riders, this is excellent because it just gives you that extra bit of confidence. I'm I'm uh, 184 centimeters tall. And on the GSA, I tip it toe on it. Well, so on this one, I instantly felt more confident because yeah. Yeah. it was just, it's very cons confident inspiring. There's no yeah. doubt. Uh, you can tip it toe, sorry, you can flat foot on this. And also the tires, it, I think BMW did a good uh, move by moving to the, uh, the Mezzo Chorens next two tires because these tires stick like glue. D -d -d didn't you feel the same mm. about tires? Mm. It definitely sticks sticks like glue. Um, the overall build finish very premium, very nice, very nicely done. Um, and yeah, so I think that's that wraps up and that sums up our 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 two days of riding and our conclusion I, I, on the bike. I, I think it's not as intimidating as the twelve fifty. Yeah, yeah. I not think for a certain type of ride, yeah, like I said, you know, the shorter stature female riders I, I think they could just get onto this and feel a lot more comfortable uh, at, at home and comfortable and confidence as well yeah, isn't it? confidence yeah, and yeah. Um, 
it would be ideal you know yeah definitely uh, but yeah it's got its its pros and cons uh, but yeah it's actually surprising you wouldn't think it's so different you know 50 cc different but yeah it just feels completely different and uh, both me and Graham we've been talking about this bike for a long time and initially when we started uh, we had probably not the best impressions you know from what we've been reading and what we've been seeing in the market but after riding the bike it, it, it has definitely you know ticks a lot of our boxes and it's it is BMW has done a good job with the bike uh, with the design with the handling and so on but again they in our opinion they just made a whole new bike <laughs> it's just it's just not really comparable with the 12 with the outgoing 1250 because it's it's again for us this is a sports adventure tourer you agree with that Graham? yeah yeah, yeah it's uh yeah it's it's really sporty it's very sporty um you've got to put it in a dynamic mode yeah and um yeah it wants to go that's right so this is us wrapping up guys and uh, thank you all for your support and joining us through this uh, adventure we also want to give a big shout out to doncaster bmw so a big shout out to doncaster bmw the dealer principal is ross ross is an excellent guy and we've got john who worked with me in organizing the bike and also definitely a big shout out to them and if you are ever looking to get a BMW head over to Doncaster BMW meet John meet Ross and I'm sure they'll look after you they've got all the uh, these bikes are currently available for test riding you can book in for a test ride they give you a 30 minute um, test ride window that you can take it out for a spin uh, the GS 900 for those who are interested that that is arriving in April so definitely you can book that up for a, and take that up for a spin as well I personally bought my 1250 adventure from Doncaster BMW and they looked after me they really looked after me they're professional and they're really good to deal with so definitely um, go give them a visit if you are looking for a BMW and I think my friend here might be doing soon, that soon too. You know, he's, well, he's, yeah, he's uh, starting to. Uh, hats, hats off to uh, Doncaster BMW for, uh, you know, providing the opportunity to test the bike. And uh, yeah, two thumbs up. Right. Cheers. So thank you guys. Uh, thank you for the staying with us. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give us a big thumbs up. Do like, do share, do subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.